On almost every measure, our property market is performing badly. The latest ABS figures show house prices are down, people are borrowing less and building less. RP Data Senior Analyst Cameron Kusher says people are scared about buying in an uncertain climate. On RP Data's numbers, property prices across Australian capital cities fell 2.9% over the past year. Sales volumes are down by about 18% from the five year average, so clearly there's not a lot of activity out there in the market. We're seeing that uh, vendor discounting is actually at its highest level since back uh, in, the, in the midst of the GFC. So um, it is tough out there to sell. We're seeing that listings are, are not at record levels, but they're certainly at elevated levels. Um, interestingly, it's not new listings that's driving up uh, the total volume of stock on the market, it's existing listings. So clearly, property is quite hard to shift at the moment in many areas. While the outlook for property is grim, it also could be a great time to get a bargain. Kusha says some states are likely to perform better than others over the next 12 months. The market overall will be pretty flat to slightly falling, uh, obviously with some variances which city you're looking at, but I think Melbourne will be quite weak and, and Sydney and, and Canberra will probably hold up the best. Of course, those who've made a living out of investing in property are still upbeat about the future. Nathan Birch started investing when he was just 18. He says regardless of whether the market is up or down, the rules of investing stay the same. You can make money in any marketplace, whether the property cycle is going up or whether it's coming down. Uh, I, I built a lot of my equity uh, in my properties when everyone was telling me not to buy property. The news was saying bad things, uh, the interest rates were going up. But it's like when you go out to buy clothes, if you, if you buy your, your, your clothes when you're on sale time, that's where you make your money and it's no different to property. If you, can, if you can make your money where everyone else is fearing to buy property, as long as the numbers work. The numbers have certainly worked for Birch, who now holds almost 40 properties across New South Wales and Queensland. I started buying in uh, bread and butter sort of areas, Western Sydney, and that's where I made my first million dollars, was in Western Sydney. Um, they range from being on the waterfront now to being in the bush. I hold stuff in New South Wales and Queensland. My whole total property portfolio is worth between seven and a half to eight million dollars. When he first started investing, Nathan did all the hard work himself. He bought a series of damaged properties and renovated them. Now he earns money before he even gets out of bed. In the early days when I first started investing in property, I didn't have the money to actually go and pay for the right trades to do all the painting and carpentry work and I, I, I built a lot of sweat equity, should I call it, uh, by doing the work myself. And this over the years built up a skill set so I knew what things would cost, what the time frames would take and all those sorts of things. And today I, my hands don't go onto the properties, I, I pay trades people to do all the work and it's a matter of having the right system in place to get the desired result so it all comes down to labour costs and the, the cost of the materials and if you can set up a, a schedule it's just like McDonald's when they make a cheeseburger if the uh, if the process is right you can make profit from selling a two dollar cheeseburger. Nathan's tips for would-be investors are simple he urges people to look at long-term investments that build cash flow. Making sure that you make your money when you buy your property. So buying property below market value and to do that you need to know what other things are selling for in the area and knowing that you're getting a bargain because if you have to sell it tomorrow you want to know that if you have to sell it from a, a distressed sale that you'll still be making money on it. Um, the other second tip would be making sure that the cash flow is there because if you don't have the cash flow to support it, it's going to eat into your lifestyle and once again you don't go to work not to get paid. So why would you go and buy a property that's going to cost you money each week? You want it to put money in your pocket. And the third greatest tip would be not to speculate, just buy based purely on the numbers. Uh, don't bring your emotion into the, the property investing.